Hello and welcome to another class of ABM Web Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today I'll be talking about an immunology topic. Very interesting topic and very confusing topic. So the topic is immunogenicity versus antigenicity. So this is a very common topic, common terms used whenever you are going to study immunology. But it's very confusing at the same time. So I made this class to make your concept clear with examples and everything. So let's start. So today's class is So first we'll take a look about immunogenicity. What is immunogenicity and why it is called immunogenicity? So when a pathogen or a foreign molecule can induce an immune response, that time it is called immunogenicity. So the agent which is inducing the immune response or immune response is the immunogen. Okay, so let's say one example, suppose A, A is a bacteria or uh, virus okay so it induces immune response okay but how it in, uh, induce immune response from b cells to t cells so you know that b cell that will upon induction from the foreign molecule or the virus or the bacteria it will go for effector cells plus memory cells for future response now this effector is also called as plasma cells which are actively antibody secreting B cells Okay, and if you go for T cells, it will also go for effector plus memory cells. So, whenever an antigen or a virus or a bacteria can induce an immune response after entering her body, that time the response will be through B cell and T cells, that is uh, adaptive immune response, it is called immunogenicity, okay? And then and the particular substance which is uh, making this happen is called immunogen. So let's uh, stick to that immunogenicity and take it in your brain and I'll go for the antigenicity now. So antigenicity is a little bit different from immunogenicity. How? Because when an antigen, suppose it can be any foreign molecule, it can be a compound, it can be a virus, it can be a bacteria, it can be a protein or glycolipid, whatever it is, it is foreign to our body. And when it enters into our body and acting as an antigen, that time it has the capability to bind to the immune uh, response products. But it cannot induce the immune response. Okay, so I'll repeat the sentence again. Antigens are those compounds or those uh, molecules which can attach to the products of immunity or immune response, but it cannot generate or induce a immune response in our body. So likewise I said if you revert back in my video, you'll see that it can, uh, the immunogen can induce B cell and T cell mediated uh, immune response or immunity after entering into our body. But in case of antigen, it cannot, uh, it, in case of antigenicity, when you are saying antigenicity, that time it can attach to, suppose the antibody or the 
T helper cells, but it will not generate a further immune response or further enhanced levels of immune response or more production of T cells or B cells or the anti specific uh, antibodies against the particular antigen that is called antigenicity. So you can say it can attach to products of immune responses or I can change the word because it sometimes confuse you or immune system but there is a but it cannot generate or induce a an immune response in the form of B or T cell immunity or adaptive immunity. So we can reverse my video and see that when I said that immunogenicity at that time that particular molecule foreign molecule which is foreign to our immune system will induce a response mediated through B cell humoral and cell mediated that is T cell mediated responses. More and more specific antibodies as well as more TC cells or T helper cells specific to the response of this that particular antigen will be produced or enhanced in our body that is called an immunogenicity but in case of antigenicity there may not be or there is no induction of immune response so every from this total concept where the antigenicity is the attachment of the products of immune system means uh, that particular foreign antigen in case of antigenicity can bind to other uh, circulating cells or the circulating antibodies somehow but it will not generate further enhanced specific directed response against that particular molecule so here you can go for the conclusion that immunogenicity or any foreign molecule which is a can, which can uh, respond to or which can induce immunogenicity are also having the property of antigenicity because suppose virus or virus A suppose this is a virus A it binds to one antibody likewise Okay, so that virus bound to this particular antibody which further generated more antibodies, specific antibodies against that particular A virus. Okay, so that the A virus is an immunogen which enhanced or induced the humoral responses as well as the T cell responses. So it acting as an antigen as well as the immunogen because it also induces the immune response. So I was given an example of A virus. Suppose it is a virus named A uh, bound to antibodies or slash suppose uh, any cell you can say APCs antigen presenting cells which also bound to this particular I should make it in color so it will be helpful for you to understand. So either bound to any kind of antibody or APC and after binding to that things or that immune products it will generate a more B cell mediated or T cell mediated response. 
okay so b cell and t cell mediated responses will be enhanced and there is a huge active uh, response against the particular virus whereas if you suppose that particular that a or you can give another example also you can take b b virus suppose another virus called b so what i said it can attach to the immune products likewise that one or apcs but there is no immune response unlike immunogenicity so i hope this is something is making you clearing uh, clear about that particular concept that it never goes for the immune response as a foreign molecule it can be engulfed by any kind of phagocytic cell which is circulating in our body through the blood or the lymphoid organs or it can bound to any type of uh, antibodies but 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 there will be no immune response so every immunogen is antigen so every immunogen is equal to antigen but the reverse every antigen is not immunogen so because any immunogen it has to be an antigen it has to attach to the immune products to go for the further immune response but whereas in case of antigen it can attach to the immune products but it cannot induce the immune response that's why it is a, it is not an immunogen so that is the basic difference of immunogenicity and antigenicity now i will give you a live or real life example to look upon that will make your concept more clear further so you may have heard about haptens so i will take a separate class on haptens in my further immunology classes but today i will tell you a simple thing haptin so haptin shows antigenicity if it is a it is in single form so let me give an example of a haptin di nitro phenol or dnp so dnp is a haptin so haptin is nothing but the name or the term for those molecules which cannot generate immune response by themselves that means they need something to attach with to generate the immune response so dinitrophenol is a antigen you can say it is antigen but it cannot generate a immune response okay so it shows antigenicity but 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 if you attach this dnp with an immunogen that is bsa bovine serum albumin that time that dnp which is now attached to bsa will be acting as a immunogen okay so possibilities i'm telling you separate possibilities so only dnp only dnp is also a haptin no immune 
रिस्पॉन्स ओके और यू कैन से नो एंटीबॉडी वेर एज वेन यू अटैच दिस दिस इज सीनेरियो वन now going for scenario 2 where the dnp which is actually an antigen which shows antigenicity now combined with a immunogen called bsa that is bovine serum albumin that time it will show strong immune response and anti dnp antibody can be seen anti bsa antibody can be seen in your serum and anti dnp bsa plus bsa antibody can be seen that means that combined molecule combined form of dnp and bsa will generate antibodies for dnp against only dnp against only bsa and against the uh, molecular antigen determinants formed with combined dnp and bsa that will also generate antibody so this is second scenario and the third one is only bsa it will generate immune response because it's a immunogen so more b cell and plus antibodies against that particular bsa so now i hope you will understand with this example a simple example of a antigen which shows antigenicity that is dnp dinitrophenol also termed the collective term of those kind of antigens which cannot uh, generate immune response and induce immune response by themselves alone are called haptens so don't uh, bother about haptens i will get a separate class for those you know, for this uh, haptem today just uh, concentrate on dinitrophenol which is a uh, antigen which cannot generate or induce a immune response by itself so it needs a immunogen here i have taken as an immunogen is bsa so only dnp the antigen cannot generate immune response no antibody or cell mediated immune response are generated if the dnp and bsa is combined that time uh, anti dnp antibodies can be seen anti bsa and anti dnp plus bsa and if bsa is present bsa is immunogen so uh, in general it will uh, generate an immune response so i think you are very clear with now if you have any doubt regarding this uh, immunogenicity or antigenicity please ask me uh, and uh, if you need me to get extra class or specific class on some kind of topics please tell me so if you like my video give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe thank you